What's up? What is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. I'm tired of people talking crap about the Google Pixel 4 XL. I think this phone generally just gets way too much criticism, and it's a lot better of a device than it may seem. Another thing I gotta say about the Pixel 4 XL is that camera doesn't really do this phone too much justice. I think this phone looks and feels a lot better in person and actually using the phone just feels better to use than you might see online. It's a lot easier to you know present a ton of features on a Samsung phone or present the iPhone with its multiple colors on the iPhone 11 for example than the Pixel which kind of doesn't seem like the most photogenic phone but when you actually hold it and use it it's a very good device and in this video I just basically want to address all the complaints and criticisms about this device because I think it gets a lot of undeserved criticism. So key complaint number one is price. Uh, price on this phone is $899 here for the Pixel 4 XL and this has been one of the chief complaints about this device for what you're getting, um, not paying $899 for that phone. And I kind of agree to a some point here, I do think the Pixel 4 XL didn't push the boundaries enough to charge that premium. But here is the counter to that. The Pixel 4 XL does have a trade-in program, so you can trade in a device and get this much cheaper. In addition, historically, the Pixels do oftentimes get discounts just a few months later. So if you just wait a little bit, the Pixel 4 XL will come down. So this whole criticism about price is just the upfront cost if you're gonna pay full outright for this device. And most of these criticisms come because the person is also using their comparison mind where they're thinking about other phones and what they cost and things like that. And it makes sense because they're trying to help you get the best value. Keep in mind, value is very subjective. And if you're thinking about the hardware the Pixel 4 XL is offering, I don't see why it's not worth $899. This phone is giving you a top tier display. It's giving you a top tier glass back with wireless charging, top tier cameras. It does have this nice aluminum frame that kind of feels uh, like polycarbonate. It's very grippy. So this phone feels like a flagship phone. So I don't understand the huge complaint about the price other than that there's other phones on the market that have maybe pushed the boundaries a little bit more this year. But if you really like the Pixel experience, this might still be worth the money. Complaint number two is that the Pixel is an ugly phone. Now, <laughs> Okay, Pixel puts a square camera, Apple has a square camera. Now, a lot of people did bash Apple, but it seems like most people are starting to really love the 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, myself included. But I think the Pixel 4 XL is a great looking phone. It's minimal, it's clean. And yeah, some people are saying, well, it looks like an iPhone, they copied the iPhone. Have you not looked at Huawei devices? Apple totally ripped off the square camera from the Huawei devices. So I'm not even gonna go there with you on that one. The square camera here is just kind of the trend of 2019 and Pixel 4 XL has it, but the phone itself is pretty clean overall. The front device does have a reduced bezel at the bottom, but a bigger one at the top, and it's a pretty safe design choice, but it's a functional, practical, utilitarian device. Uh, it, it looks pretty good. I, I don't really see it being an ugly phone. Is it the best looking phone on the market? Absolutely not, by my opinion, but I do think it's a very nice phone. So the criticism about this being some ugly phone, I just... I don't see it. I think it's a very nice phone. And again, it's not super photogenic. It looks a lot better, feels a lot better in person. So the next chief complaint is the battery. Funny enough, I'm talking about battery and I haven't charged up the phone just yet. But I've been using this for almost, I think, three to four weeks already. And this phone's battery life has been superb for me, the 4XL specifically. Now, I've heard big complaints on the small one. I'm not gonna speak on that because personally, I have not used the device, so I'm not gonna sit up here and say it sucks. But the Pixel 4 XL's battery life does not suck, I promise you that. Is it the best on the market? No, I don't find this to be the best on the market, but I've been easily getting through the day with this phone. It's a one day phone, and it does have fast charging included in the box. In addition to that, the Pixel 4 XL also has some of the best standby battery drain I've seen on the market. This phone, if I lock the screen and I just leave it off all night, I wake up in the morning, I barely lost any percentages. So I love that about the Pixel 4 XL. Great standby time. Now this next one is a big one and that is the lack of a wide angle camera. So the Pixel 4 XL, when you do go ahead and take a photo, you're gonna see there's no ability to come wide. It's just a regular wide angle, not an ultra 
wide angle but it does have shadow adjustment which is nothing like any other phone on the market has yeah you have pro modes but you don't have shadow adjustment and the pixel 4 xl uses computational photography to give you some excellent results so what are my thoughts on the complaints about the wide angle personally i do miss the wide angle as well i would have loved to seen it here on the pixel but i don't think it's hard to forgive this phone when you see how good the results of the photos are i look at this phone as more of a sharp and great zoom camera because the actual results with the computational photography on the zoom results this is the best zoom i've seen on any phone with a single camera unless you're using a hardware camera to do that zoom this phone has excellent results on the zoom. When you do pinch in, you do see a lot more detail than other telephoto cameras that includes the 11 Pro Max and the Note series. And I'm gonna go ahead and not just talk, I'm gonna illustrate this point to you. So I took a picture of the Best Buy from way back. I'm probably at least 100 feet to 200 feet away from the store. This is a zoom shot and any telephoto camera could get this shot, but here's the thing. If you take a look closely, the detail is not noisy, it's not blurred, and this looks like I took it probably with a zoom lens. It's pretty darn good, it's pretty usable. That's something you don't see on other phones. So if you love to zoom, you can forgive the Pixel 4 XL for a wide angle. If you like really sharp results, the computational photography is very good. Also, I noticed with the Pixel 4 XL, it's a lot faster to process that photo. It comes up really fast. The Pixel 3 XL sometimes would do its little tricks with the HDR and all that. With the Pixel 4, the shutter speed and processing that computational photo is a lot quicker. I love the camera on this phone. I just sometimes miss the ultra wide, but I don't think it's enough to say this is not a good device. And the cool thing about the Pixel is that the front facing camera also uses that computational photography. So you get ultra sharp results on that selfie camera. Now the next chief complaint is the no 90 Hertz when you lower the brightness. Now I have a simple solution to this. You can go down to your system settings, go to advanced, you go to developer options and down here in developer options, you can easily just force the 90 Hertz on at all times. Google has improved this in the November update as well and I see them improving it further going forward. So this is a simple software update they need to fix that. It's not the biggest deal. So that complaint is really overhyped. Now the next one is the face unlock. The ability to face unlock this phone while you're sleeping. I have tried this with my eyes closed. Yes, unfortunately it will unlock with your eyes closed. They're gonna push an update to this device that's going to fix that. If you haven't bought this phone and you're really concerned about that, you might just wanna wait till that update and by then there might be a discount on this phone anyway. At the same time, I turned off attention awareness on the iPhone and I was able to get Face ID to unlock the phone with my eyes closed as well. So, But on a positive note, the face unlock is a lot more convenient and it's very fast over like a fingerprint sensor in display. You got your fingers full or something, your hands are full, fingers full, you got your hands full. Um, it's easy to just look at the phone and unlock the phone and it's very, very quick. It's one of the fastest face unlocks I've ever seen. So when it gets fixed, this face unlock has tons of potential and that, and that motion sense feature where you can swipe through music and stuff like that is pretty neat as well. Next complaint I'm seeing on the Pixel 4 XL people talking crap about is the, the brightness. And I gotta say, I don't know what it is about this phone, but you do have to crank it way up to get that brightness. You can be about here on some other phones and it'll feel like it's about there on the Pixel 4 XL. So yeah, I wanna see this improve. This one I really cannot argue against the crap to being talked about this phone because that is not great. The fact that you have to raise it way up to get brightness, but the only reason I'm able to still use the Pixel even with that chief complaint right there about the brightness is the Pixel 4 XL has a super smooth 90 hertz. We already talked about how great that can be. It makes the phone way smoother. And the actual resolution of this display is extremely high. The pixels per inch are higher than the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Galaxy Note. So if you like a very high res screen, the Pixel 4 XL is great. Also the colors themselves, the display itself looks absolutely fantastic. So I really love the display, even though you have to crank it up to get that brightness up. So I just like to see improvement to the brightness. And many, many are missing the perks of the Pixel 4 XL, having the ability to store your photos in a high resolution on the cloud, like the full original resolution. Now you're just getting high quality for that. Now that's a big bummer for people who were used to the Pixel giving you that perk, but you know, you could still get the 128 gig if you want, store them locally, maybe put them on a hard drive before you put it in the cloud and it goes to a compressed high quality photo. On the whole, this could be a deal breaker if you rely on cloud storage. Um, but at the same time, 
I don't think it's a big deal for somebody who's serious about their photography because if you're serious about your photography, you likely know how to transfer your photos to a hard drive and something like that. So serious photographers, that could probably annoy. But even the high quality one in Google Photos, it still looks pretty nice. I mean, it's not the original quality, but it still looks pretty nice. And so for a lot of people, there's annoyances with this phone, looking at a spec sheet, looking at reviews and things like that. But this phone is a very enjoyable phone to use. And mostly that's because Google software shines here. Now, a lot of people um, are gonna say, well, it doesn't have all the features and it looks pretty basic. Well, that's kind of the point of the Pixel. It's to be a minimal, simple software that kind of gets out of the way instead of you know, distracting you all day. They got some awesome features like focus features. In addition to that, like the focus mode, you have grayscale. They have a feature that's called wind down, which will turn your whole phone gray at night and allow you to get more sleep. And things like that just make this feel like a more personal experience, more of a, a phone that cares about you not using it too much. Digital well-being is here on this phone. Android 10, the latest version of Android, is always gonna be on this phone for at least the next several years. So great software support. Not a huge not and that bezel is useful because there are sensors in there for face unlock which will be fixed in future updates so you can't unlock it with your eyes closed the pixel software is the most intuitive and simple android software i've i use on any phone it's excellent i really do love it but if you're a feature head you love features the most features you can get on a phone it's probably not for you so yeah the market is flooded with tons of great option phones some that may look better than this that are cheaper to you but that's why there's options but for people to criticize this phone the way they have been, I just don't see it because honestly, I use this, the Note, and the iPhone, and they all feel pretty comparable. Each one missing out on something I want from the other one. So there's really no perfect phone on the market. There's just options, and the Pixel 4 XL is just another option that's great for people who want that want an excellent camera that uses great software to go ahead and make the photos better than they really should look and great zoom photography. And for people who wanna do astrophotography, this is like the only phone that can do that. People who wanna maybe switch from the iPhone, try out Android and you know have them software updates they're used to, have a face unlock similar that they're used to and have a simple experience they're kinda of used to but just wanna try Android, this could be a great option for you. So let me know your thoughts. Do you think I'm justified in my points here? Do you think that that everything I said are reasons not to buy this phone or are you just like, yeah, the Pixel 4 XL is a pretty darn good phone. I just don't get it. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick here helping you to master your technology. I will catch you all in the next episode and I can't wait to see what you guys got to say about this one. Be sure to be well. Peace. Peace.